Darwin died in April 1882 at the age of 73. The family thought he would be buried in the parish churchyard. Darwin had said months before he died that he would have to look forward to it as the sweetest place on earth. It was not to be. In London, Darwin's friends determined to make his death and burial a state occasion. They went to the Royal Society and they got signatures. They went to the House of Commons and got up a petition. They telegraphed the Dean of Westminster who was abroad and got his approval. A special anthem was even written for the occasion. And on the 26th of April, a week after the death, Darwin's body was borne mightily in procession down the Isle of Westminster Abbey to be interred in the shadow of the grave of Sir Isaac Newton. Darwin's interment celebrated the vast social transformation that England was undergoing. There were new colonies, new industries, and new men to run them. Darwin's body was enshrined to the greater glory of these new professionals, for he had naturalized creation and delivered human nature and human destiny into their hands. Society would never be the same. Darwin's vision of nature was, I believe, fundamentally a religious vision, one with which he ended his most famous work on the origin of species. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. <laughs>